Are we working? Good. <clears throat> like to welcome everyone. Uh, I'm delighted that you're here and I'm delighted uh, Councilor M. Shea is healthy and here. Uh, I don't um, uh, consider uh, M. Shea a guest teacher, but as part of our family, part of our team of teachers. Um, earlier, I was um, meeting with him and saying, I want to have a very stable Dharma Center, where we have a number of qualified teachers that care for each other, that teach in harmony with each other, so that the Dharma continues, right? So as as wonderful as I am, it is not, uh, it should not be like, I don't want to be a lone teacher for Lions Roar. I want Lions Roar to continue for many generations and lifetimes, knowing that the true refuge is the Dharma, and we have our beloved teachers, um, but uh, the true Guru Yoga is to realize the Four Noble Truths, isn't it so? Yeah. So um, when uh, Rimshay asked what uh, like teaching on, of course, uh, I thought immediately of Bodhisattva Path and uh, how it relates to modern life, because uh, Rimshay is very interested in keeping uh, Dharma contemporary, which had its essence, it always is, of course, but the forms and the presentations have to keep up with what sentient beings need. So uh, gracefully he thought, oh, that's, he assented and said, oh, that's a really good topic. So and I'm really interested to hear what he has to say. Um, I don't know if there's time for questions, comments, and things like that. We'll, we'll see. He can decide. Uh, if if we do do that, then um, this very agile person next to me will will uh, jump up and uh, give you a microphone. But you don't want to step over the puja table. That wouldn't be proper, would it? Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll, we're going to take a short break and then have uh, the Nam Gyalma initiation at one o'clock. Who's, who's going to be here for that? Raise your hand. Very good. Okay. So after that, we'll, for Rimshay to prepare, then uh, we're going to wait uh, in the dojo, which you can go outside, come in the side door, or we just walk down the hall. Capish? <laughs> okay. All right. Please, please teach. <clears throat> Thank you. 
uh, kind of want you to help Rupshe if you need some help. It's a little tricky, yeah. Just like, okay. Mm -hmm. This way, it should be like this. Okay. Yeah, that's the correct way. Yeah. Okay. Can you all hear me? Okay. <laughs> uh, just first of all, that uh, uh, thank you for Lamala and the thank you for the, all the Lion Law, Lion Row Centers the member. And uh, I got uh, one more opportunity to get here. In the Sacramento and uh, myself feel so uh, happy and uh, because I, <clears throat> whenever I come to the Sacramento so this is Sacramento and uh, I feel like I, all the time whenever I come here I came uh, I come here on the where uh, at the time of the my birthday, <laughs> so first I, I think first time when I come here, the giving the Manjushri Buddha initiation, it was on my birthday. Yeah, now and a few days later, the my birthday is coming, so I'm here in California. So I feel that uh, really very much connected in the yeah in the, this way is. And uh, now the today's the as you all know the topic is about the. Uh, uh, how to live the bodhisattvas way of life in the modern time. Am I right? I'm not very sure, but yeah. And the more I come to this center, now I have a less thing to talk because I talk a lot. So there's nothing much left to hear. <laughs> so anyway, so today's decision, maybe I will talk into the uh, very basic, and also a little bit of the touch with the advanced practices. Because sometimes that uh, when I talk too much of the basic, because many of the you have studied the quite long, so you know the all the things and the, you may feel bored and the things that, oh, that you know it. <laughs> There's nothing special in that. So we will talk the basic things, then also I'll talk about the advanced and the especially I will try to talk from the, my own experience and my master's the experience. Because as the Buddhist the practice, it is a very important that they always take the Buddhist practice as a spiritual journey. Spiritual journey is a few things are very important for the journey. When you start a journey, first thing is the destination. You should know that where you're going. And the second thing is a direction. That's a very important. And the third thing is a company. Have you heard this? A very nice saying in the Vietnam is that if you, if you, if you want to, if you, if you want to go very far away, go with the company. Yeah, that's very nice. If you go to the very far away, you have to go with the company. So that the same thing is a, as the Dharma practice is like a spiritual journey, destination, direction, company is a very important. So right now, the lots of the time, in the especially in the. America and the West, Western. So when the Dharma practice and the meditation, it's a, you take it like a physical exercise. Like, oh, 30 minutes. I do the meditation for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. This is the how you train your body. When you go to the gym, they will introduce, okay, 40 minutes twice a week. This is not going to work in the meditation and the Dharma practice. It's not going to work. Because lots of people used to ask me that the, how many hours do I meditate? I always say, I don't know how many hours I meditate daily. Because for the, every moment, for me, is the time to meditate. Every moment is for time to meditate. Every moment you have to meditate. Combine the meditation with the, when you're having the food, meditate a few minutes. When you walk, meditate. When you do whatever things, you can combine the meditation. 
but I always say, don't meditate while you are driving. I have told you that before and still I'm sick on that point, okay? So that time you should not meditate. Other than that, so that is the, so, so that is the one thing. So that's why the, today's the topic, as I told you, when you're starting the spiritual journey, the destination. So that's why the, in the modern life, especially right now, the, in this time, lot of the, what, what the modern world means, a lot of the distractions are there, a lot of the getting distractions. These are the distraction among when you get distracted with a lot of the thing, sometimes the, you will not have that time for the yourself. So the, when you go to the school and after you finish the school, then you will raise the family, then you have to raise your children. So it's lots of the time you are just consumed by the other. So you should have the some time for the yourself. So this is the, the Dharma, the practice. Is the destination of the Dharma practice should, should be that the, to realize the your true self and the get connect with the yourself, get the connecting with the yourself. So, so, and the, that is the term in the Dharma term, as you have heard the called the enlightenment. No, you have heard the term called the enlightenment. So, enlightenment is the should be the destination. Now, here the what is the real enlightenment? There is a very nice story. There is a, one of the great master in the one temple. He achieved the enlightenment. So a lot of the new, I mean, the young monks in that temple, so curious about the, his experience of the achieving the enlightenment. So then he, they went to ask that old master, how do you feel after you achieve the enlightenment? What's your experience of the achieving the enlightenment? So master told the one thing. Before I achieve the enlightenment, whenever monasteries sound the gong, no gong, what do you call the bell, the gong, or all this. when they sound the gong, I bring the my ball, I bring the my ball and go to the kitchen to have the food. After I finish the food, I will wash my ball, baking ball, no, what do you call? It? After I achieve the enlightenment, when they sound the gong, I will take my ball go to the kitchen, eat the food. After the food, I will wash it again. So this is a very nice story that enlightenment is a something like a transformation from the inside. Lots of the people sometimes feel the enlightenment is sudden, the changes, transformation more from the external. This is no external transformation, no. internal transformation. So the Dharma practice is to bring the, your inner transformation. Changes from the what the state, what you are to change in the more, I mean, the pure or the better mental state, okay? That is the destination should be whenever you practice the Dharma, okay? That should be the destination. Because right now, the I always tell the one thing, one good thing of the modern time, okay? One good thing in the modern time. Buddha said the one thing, to achieve the enlightenment, the three things are very important. Buddha said the wisdom and the meditation and the discipline. Morality and ethic, discipline. Okay, three things are very important: wisdom, discipline, and uh, uh, wisdom, discipline, meditation. Three things are very important. Now, I told them. Now, in the modern time, to achieve the enlightenment, four things are very important: meditation, wisdom, discipline, plus zoom. So now that in the modern time, lots of the time I get the class on the Zoom. You have the more, I mean, the access to the Dharma, more opportunity to practice the Dharma. At the time of the Buddha, it, if it takes the 20 years to achieve the enlightenment, in the modern time, we, have, we can achieve the 10 years, more facilities to reach the Dharma. Even I'm staying at a thousand kilometers away, but I'm connecting with all my students all over the world. Very easy through the Zoom, we are getting connected. So that's why the, what I'm saying is that, the, so now the, when you come for the, that's the, in the modern time. And the one thing is that the, wherever there is an opportunity, there's also the obstacles. Also in the modern, lots of the obstacles are there. Because of the day, actually these obstacles are the, I will not see these, are the obstacles. Sometimes these are, if you cannot overcome it, then it's an obstacle. 
Once you can overcome it, it's not obstacle at all. So let me put, uh, let me put like this. So there is uh, one person and uh, he cannot sleep at all. So then he went to see the master and they told the master that I couldn't sleep. So, and the, can you help me? I have only one problem in my life that I could not sleep. Other than that, if you can solve this problem, then I will be the happiest person in this world. Because this really, the insomnia, when, when I could not sleep, it really hurts me a lot, mentally and physically. So then the, what happened is that the, then the master teach him the some of the meditation technique. And uh, after the one month later, then master met him and they told him, now, how's your life? So he told that master that the, nothing much changed in my life. Only the difference is now I can sleep well. That's all. Other than that, I'm same as before. <laughs> so thing is that when you are having the problem, you will feel that, that that is a very big problem. Once you can overcome it, then you will think it's not an obstacle at all. It's just, so that's why the, when you are practicing Dharma, whatever the obstacle, whatever things are there, you have to overcome it, especially the distractions or all those things no? that you have to overcome. Because we are not knowing that the, these all the, in this modern world, because the world is getting very small, all is getting small, and uh, we are more connected with the people, more we are connected and uh, so more with the connected with the people, I will use it as a very superficial level we are connected. So what we have to do is that uh, in the practicing the Dharma in this the modern time, we have to be very aware and we have to manage the time very properly. That the time managing the time, okay? Right now, the all we think that, that the managing the money or the wealth is more important, but I will say the managing the time. Because in the in my home, I really saw that the, my mother, my father, and my brother, my niece, all sometimes really they are, when they they could not spend a very quality time. Everyone get very busy with their own cell phone and the televisions and the, yeah, then getting very busy. Sometimes like these kind of the distraction, we are not knowing that these kind of distraction is a psychologically it will giving the very negative impact in our mind psychological infect. So that's why the, if you're very serious Dharma practice, when you come, so Barry, you have to be aware of it. Because right, I was teaching a monastery so many years in the South India monastery. So South India monastery, in the last year, I visited the South India monastery. But many of the, you know that, no? I left the job of teaching philosophy in the monastery, no? Yeah, because I, okay. The, I always tell that, the, you know, I used to teach the philosophy debate in the monastery. Now I left at that job. So now don't ask me the why I left it, okay? <laughs> anyway, so my point is that in the South India monastery, even it's a monastery, I saw a lot of the young monks getting distracted with these social medias, no? So, so social media getting lots of them get distracted. So when our time, I, there is no social media and we can fully focus on the Dharma practice and all things we can fully focus. Right now, the, that is the one I can say that you have to overcome that. You have to overcome that watching the televisions and too much excess of the watching, okay, social media. So that is the, what you have to do. And uh, if, you are the, if you are the very beginner of the Dharma practice, then you can combine with the watching the television, social media, still you can carry on the meditate. If you come to the serious level, you have to detach from it, okay? Because if the beginner, if I tell that, okay, now you have to detach from this and that, they will feel very difficult to practice because they want to get the, all the, enjoy the, all these other facilities not to get detached. So if you come to the little bit more serious, then you have to get detached. Detach is a, something that is a very important for the, if you, I'm talking about the, you are for the, okay, serious, okay, when you are practicing so long time, slowly you have to learn the, how to get detached with the many things. So when you get, you are not knowing that once you get more, you'd get detached, more you try feel the more peace and the joy. Because attachment is a, sometimes that when you get too attached to the social media or the television or whatever, too attached, you're not knowing that attachment is a very sweet poison. It's a very sweet poison, okay. 
sweet poison and the s i think that i told several time in the class that the, when you get into attach attachment comes because mainly because of the your self centered attitude or the self centered attitude self cherishing attitude love is a very nice you have to love everyone but not to get attached okay how to get detached let me tell you that the for the when you are coming for the serious the dharma practice slowly you have to get detached detached means you can ac you should accept and you can accept it you or the maybe you let me let me put it in a very simple way okay when you get too attached to the coffee what will happen is you cannot live without the coffee when you get too but when you love the coffee you can enjoy the coffee once you don't have the coffee uh, you can enjoy the tea when you get attached to the coffee then you, you coffee must there when there is no coffee, you cannot leave. So that's why the serious dharma practitioner, you have to learn from the detached, especially from the good things. Okay, <laughs> this is detaching, the, especially from the good things. So you feel that for the beginner, I know it feels like a, that is the impossible. For the you become the more serious the dharma practitioner. When you more, you get detached from the good things. You will feel more joy and uh, peace inside, because the as I told you the one thing, let me give you the, have you heard about the monkey when they, when they got the nut in the, their hand? You know the, how they catch the monkey? Yeah, they will, yeah, you know that story, you know, when the monkey, huh? Okay, who knows the story? Okay, who don't knows the story? Okay, who knows the story? Tell those people who don't know the story. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they're saying that the, when they catch the monkey, they put the nut in the cage. No, so monkey first they put the hand in the cage and then they will grab the nut. Then they will not let the nuts, so they will hold the nuts and they cannot pull out their hand from the cage. That's a story. I never seen the monkey holding like that. Okay, but the story, what it can be true. Okay, so point is that attachment is exactly how it holds. Sometimes attachment, you will hold it. Even he cannot pull your hand out of the cage, but still you will hold the nut. Attachment, one more story is a very interesting story that one of the, my favorite stories that one time in the ancient time, there was, a, there was a sweeper in the king's palace. Sweeper in the king's palace, he found the one penny out of the king's palace took one penny. And uh, he just got that penny and the, uh, what happened is that the, then the, he just thought that the, if I keep the penny with me, I might get lost it. So I will bury somewhere. So he went to the king's, that time the king's palace is huge. So they have the four gates, four main gates. And the, he buried that one penny under the eastern gate site, eastern gate of the palace. He buried the penny under the eastern gate of the site. And uh, what happened is the daytime, that kingdom was so hot, even the birds will not fly. Everyone stay in the house because the weather is extreme hot. They can have a heat, heat of stroke. So no one dares to go out. And uh, he was resting at the daytime. And after lunch, he was resting in his home. Suddenly he remembered that the, he buried the penny under the eastern gate, under the eastern gate. He just ran. Just wake up and run. His wife and wife told him not to go. You will get a heat stroke. No, 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 no. He told that I have to get something very important thing. Then he just run to get in the eastern side of the gate to get that penny. The king saw him running in the very, running so fast in the so very hot weather. So king was so curious and asked the guard to catch him and ask him to bring him to him. So guard went and caught him and bring to the king. And the king asked that no one is going like this, the very extreme, the hot weather time. At the daytime, no one walks outside. What makes you not only walk, run so fast. So king told, uh, king told him that, uh, sorry, the, he told the king that the, I buried the one penny under the eastern gates. So I have to get that. The king felt so mercy and uh, for him and the very compassionate and, and told the king that, the, okay, just forget about the, that penny. I will give you the five gold coin. So he told, no, 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 I have to go and get the penny. I have to go and get the penny, <laughs> not the five gold coin. The king told me, okay, 
100 gold coin. So still he said, no, 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 I have to get the penny. Now the king said, okay, we will settle the issue like this. I will give you the half size of the half size of the, my kingdom. It is okay. Now you will forget the penny. He said, yes. One condition. If you give me the if king told, I will give you half size of the half of the, my kingdom. Will you forget that penny? One penny. He said, yes, but in the one condition. If you give me the half kingdom from the eastern side, then I will, I will, I will, I will agree. Still the attachment to something, one penny attachment, even the half kingdom, still he wants to get that, get the penny. That's the, how the attachment works. Sometimes when you get attached to something, many good things you are missing in your life, but you are not aware that what the good things you are missing. So like this person, when you get to the attached to the one penny, he just throw the king's offer of the five gold coin. But the, you might think that, the, oh, no, no one will get that much attached to the penny. Just throw. But in your life, it's happening all the time. Okay. So that's why the, for the serious practitioner, what I'm saying, the detachment, you have to get detached. To detachment, so that's why the detachment is a very important, especially in this modern life, it's a very important. Why I'm saying the detachment importance of modern life in the so this is time where you will see the, a lot of things like commercial advertisement, television, and the social media, a lot of the things, no? And they will in these advertisement, they will let you feel that if you don't get this, you're missing a lot of things in the, your life. Have you? Uh, sorry, that I'm not so sure whether you remember the one story. There is a one real estate agent is selling the house. So then the real estate agent sell the house to the one person and they told the house is very good and this and that. A lot of the explain they give it. And the person bought the house. After person bought the house and after the what happened is after the few months later, the, the, that the whole the areas there, the drainage system is not that good. So they, the water came out from the drain and they got a flood on the house. And that the person who buys the house from the real estate, I mean, the, the company, and the complaint and told that, uh, told that the agent that uh, really the, what the house you sell, I bought it just a one span. Now you look, the drainage system is not good. It's a, now my house is a half under the water. Now it's very difficult. So now you have to give me back the uh, money and I want to give you back the house. Then the real estate agent was a so freak out. And I, then he talked in the company and the talk with the company boss. Now the people who buy the house want to money back because they are complaining that the house is under the water because of the drainage system, the problem. So the company boss told him that uh, you don't have to worry. Now it's a very good time to sell the water boat. Go and tell them to buy the water boat. So this is the modern system, how the system, whether it is like that. And the media, social media, and the, I put lots of advertisement. So that's why it Create, it generates a lot of the, your attachment. More you get attached to a lot of the things, you will feel like a, your, your life is a very lack of a lot of the things. So that's why the, what I'm doing, the detachment. No? So for the, for the serious, or when you come to the practice, the detachment. The best way to the practice the detachment is the practicing the impermanent. Okay, Impermanent, the best way. Everything would not lead the forever. And especially that the very important that in the life to the like the relations and the whatever impermanent is a very important practice when you're having the whatever things what you're having appreciate it when you get attached you will not appreciate it you will trying to get more and more that the how the attachment works when you really practice the impermanent then you will feel the appreciating the things when you more you can appreciate then you can have the more peace and the joy so that's why the impermanent, okay? That is a more, for if you're very serious, so you have to practice that, that impermanent a little bit, okay? More, okay, impermanence. And the, yeah, that is the, now I don't have to tell the how to practice impermanent, no? Now many of the, you have already studied and then now you know that, no? So that's why the impermanent practice, okay? And that this is the thing. Now the, about the, about the, in the modern life, the direction. Direction is a, something that, the, as I told you in the spiritual journey, the direction is a very important direction. Sometimes you can practice well, sometimes you cannot practice well. 
that is a very common thing. So, okay. Some people always hear me that uh, sometimes they can practice very well. Sometimes they cannot practice that well. That is a very common. Okay. Most important thing is that the most important things of continuation is a very important. Okay. Keep on the continuation. In my own experience, like an emptiness practice, for the several years, I don't see the, any improvement in the, my practice at all. Then I ask my master, I, I don't know what's happening with me. So my master told me one day, okay, stop the practice in the emptiness. Just do the practice of the mandala offering, on the accumulating the merits. And the, so many years I stopped. Then the later on one occasion, I still clearly remember one time I was in the Switzerland and sudden, suddenly one morning, I feel like I have to get a very good realization and understanding of the emptiness, immediately that. So something like that, sometimes that your practice, you will feel like it's not improving. But when the time ripen, then you will certainly you will have the such realizations of the understanding. But the thing is that the continuation is a very important. Continuation, okay? Because the right now, the many of the people, they tell me, oh, I meditated 10 years or 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. Still, I don't see of the, any improvement. So it is not like that. Okay, it's not the, it is not, as I told you, because when you go to the gym in the two months, three months, you will see the some of the difference in the body, no? Sometimes in the spiritual practice, Dharma practice, you might not see that immediately. Sometimes it may take, some people might see the difference, sometimes might not. But you have to keep the continuation, okay? That's a very important. I have to move forward all the time, okay? Does it make a sense? Hmm? That is, a, okay? So, because the, if you look back, it's very important to look back at the, like Lama Tsongkhapa's life history. Lama Tsongkhapa, when he was practicing, one certain point, he got very stuck, okay? Very stuck and he don't know how, what to do and meditate. So certain point he got very stuck, and at that moment, then he he what he did is uh, he asked his master to consult with the Majushri Buddha. His master consult with the Majushri Buddha, and he got uh, some info, uh, some answer, but still he could not get it very clearly. Then he practiced, and then he had the visualization of the Majushri Buddha. Then he had the direct conversation with the Majushri Buddha, and then it really helped his practice. Then he got the realization of the emptiness, okay? So that's why the right now the, you are coming to the practice and the beginner label and the intermediate label. The advanced label, always think that your practice is advanced label slowly like a Lama Tsongkhapa life story, okay? Like to practice the Majushri Buddha, some sorts of having the direct, I mean, the conversation. This is the very advanced label and the very careful you have to do, okay? Do things, okay? In the future, you have the direct contact with the Majushri Buddha and the conversation with Majushri Buddha. Don't forget me, okay? <laughs> that is a very advanced level and the very careful you have. Why I'm saying the careful is that this world is full of the psycho peoples, no? Who lots of things, are, oh, they see this and that. Because my own experience, I met a lot of people, okay? One time, let me tell you the one. I'm not so sure that uh, whether you have heard about a certain uh, uh, the Tamil is a one area of the Kathmandu city. You, who, you know the Kathmandu, you know, where the capital of Nepal. I was in the restaurant in the Kathmandu. Then the, I met the one gentleman. And the, I, was, uh, I was having the dinner with uh, some group of people. That person told me that uh, he had the, some of the private question. I don't know that person. So then he came to me and the, he told me the one thing that the, have you heard about the Shambhala? Shambhala is a, such a is I will say it's more like a mythical stories or the stories about that is a like a pure land in this world. Okay, certain people can get in there, and the once in get in there, they will live the hundred and thousand years. But looks ever youth, even the thousand years old. Once they step out, then they will become so old. That's a lots of books about the Shambhala. It's like a mythological stories. Okay. One gentleman told me that the hills fly over so far away and they came to the sea, the Himalayas and around. And that he told me that he was searching for the Shambhala. And that he feels two years, he feels very quite near to the Shambhala. Only problem is that he cannot find the gate of the Shambhala. He's asking me, can I give some tips for him to find in the gate of the Shambhala? <laughs> One site is so, so funny. 
But the one side, I feel sad and the compassion, mercy to him. Few years he spent like a searching the something which really don't exist at all. My belief, okay, my belief don't exist at all. But the, still he was working so hard on getting that. So the point is that the, when I'm talking about the visualizations of the deities, that should be the very careful. Because the, when you look at the Lama Tsongkhapa story, Lama Tsongkhapa, when he having the direct visualizations of the Manjushri Buddha, he asked so many questions. Questions and this Manjushri Buddha, whatever the answered him, he told him that I don't understand it at all. The Manjushri Buddha told him to write it down. When the times come, right times comes, you will understand it. It is a very important message it gives. Because the normally people went to having the hallucination, whatever you are having the hallucination, the Buddha or whatever, they will talk exactly that what you know. So that's why the one very famous story in the ancient the masters, there is one young monk and he told the master that I could not sleep in my room because ghost is coming and they're disturbing me all the time. The ghost is coming all the time. So master told there is no ghost. It's your comes from your imagination. So no, no, no. He told the ghost comes and the ghost talk like this. Ghost knows exactly that what I do. I had the... I, I visited the, my relative house. You know the thukpa. Thukpa is a, it's a, thukpa is a noodles, noodle soup, okay? Tibetan is a very famous food, okay? When I had the thukpa, thukpa sorry, the noodle soup in the, my relative house, the ghost will tell me that what I had the food. That time when I went to a relative house, no one is there. So master told him one thing. Okay, next time when the ghost come, put your hand in the sack of the grain, you know the grain grain and the, just take out the handful of the grain and ask the ghost, ghost, how many pieces of the grain in your hand? So student did exactly that. When the ghost comes and he just put his hand in the grain and pull out a handful of the grain and ask the ghost, how many pieces of the grain in my hand? And then the ghost disappear. Because the ghost don't know the answer because the himself don't know the answer. When himself don't know the answer, what will the ghost can answer? This is the word. Sometimes when you're having the hallucination of the deity, exactly that Buddha will talk the, exactly the, what you know. So Lama Tsongkhapa, the Manjushiri is totally different. Very deep points. He talked the Lama Tsongkhapa, but now I don't understand it at all. It's going very big. So that is the, in case when you see the Manjushiri Buddha, okay, Manjushiri Buddha talks the, exactly the what you know, then, you, then that is another right Manjushiri Buddha, okay? Now I will tell you the one better way how to identify the right Manjushri Buddha, okay? If you see, if you have the visualization of the Manjushri Buddha, ask the, ask the super lotto number, okay? <laughs> ask the super lotto number, okay? <laughs> then you will know. <laughs> okay, so this is the, I'm just uh, talking, I'm just telling you the very advanced label, no? Advanced label, how you have to go to the practice, okay? Advanced label way, okay? So now the because the Dharma is the I like a spiritual journey. Slowly you have to move and move and move and more and more further. So that's why I tell about that the, I'm having the session on the online like a six years program. So my my wish is that the, after the learning it, the student can stand on their own feet. Then they can practice and they can learn them uh, just like a, this learning is like giving the tools of the, the practice. And then they have to deal with their own emotions and they have to stand on their own feet. So that's why the now the Dharma zone is very important. You have to move further and further. So that's why the not to remain as the same as a three years back or four years back. Okay. So that's why the first will be the very beginner label. Then come to the intermediate label. Then come to the advanced label. But the lots of people try to jump in the advanced label immediately. Then nothing will happen. Okay. So the these also the very like a foundation of the practice is the very important like a foundation of the practice. No. So these are very important like a bodhicitta, compassion. These are the foundation of the that you should always be there. That is a foundation. Okay. Even you are practicing the very spiritual, very high practices. But if you don't have these foundation practice, then then the your Dharma practice will, will not get improved at all. Am I clear about it? Hmm? Am I clear? No. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll come to the now the point of direction is now the, if you are very beginner level, okay. If you are very beginner, what will I suggest? Uh, what always I tell the people that uh, live happily. 
enjoy if you have a social media and enjoy it but enjoy it but still you can meditate it while you're enjoying it okay so a little bit advanced labor get detached okay now don't get confused with that okay don't get if you feel like you're beginner label enjoy social media and but still you can meditate with while using it if you feel you're a little bit more advanced then try to get detached am i clear so that's why the one the Buddha was giving the teaching, he, he talked about the practice of the smaller scope, medium scope, a larger scope. Because the, it is not, a, just look at it. Today you might like an example. Okay, today you might like a pizza. Tomorrow you might not like it. This time I am having the beyond an impossible burger quite a quite lot of times. Now slowly I'm getting a little bit of the, too much, too much now. That is a changes coming in. That is a natural changes. Now, if your dharma practice, if you do it the same thing, same again and again, there is no improvement. Because once you get improved, so you are the way of the practice should be get changed. So what you have for the breakfast, you can have it of the dinner or lunch for the one week. What will happen? You will get tired of it. Because the, your, the, everything is changing from the inside. Your mind is trying to see the different things feels are too much that also happens no so that's why the dharma practice so if you're very beginner as i told you that very beginner whatever you do try to focus what you're doing okay practice it for big if you're a very beginner i always tell to try to live in the present or try to live in the present what i mean by the trying to live in the present is that when you're practicing dharma for the beginner label okay if you're watching the television be aware that you are watching the television if you are using the social media, be aware that you are or you are using the social media, not to get too much thing of the past and the future, or the beginner label. Okay, that is a very important because that the, sometimes the what happens is that the, when we are having the free time, free time, what do you think? Most of the time, when you are free, you will think something related with the past or something related with the future. So that's why the there is a one saying, I really like that saying, that if you feel sad, you're living in the past. If you feel anxiety, you're living in the future. If you feel peace, you're living in the present. So that's a, for the beginners, for the beginner, <clears throat> you're trying to live in the... Can you all hear me well? Huh? Everyone can hear? Yeah. Okay, great, yeah. When I was teaching in the Sarah Monastery, we don't have the microphone and speaker. So I'm used to teach without the microphone and speaker because sometimes when I teach them, my voice is quite loud. So yeah, anyway. Okay, so that is a, okay, beginner labels, okay? And the beginner labels that as the direction. So what the direction you have to do is that the, <clears throat> whenever you come to the Dharma practice or the meditation, it's uh, very important that the, <clears throat> for the beginners that the, whenever you are trying to meditate, as I mentioned, the two things are very important. So two things are important. The first thing is that the, just try to understand that you are the labels of the, your labels of the emotions and the, your labels of the emotion. Labels of the emotion is like that, that the, how easy, how easily do you get the stress? How easily do you get the anger? How easy do you get it? Sometimes in the life, everything does not go well in your life. How do you react it? So understanding the self is a very important. For the, if you're very beginner, I mean, the, it's, a not, it's a very important to understand the yourself, the, the, what is your emotion label. So, so what I, why I'm saying is that uh, it's very easy to see that the, your emotional label, okay? Emotionally, very easy to see that the, just if you get free later on, just close your eyes and uh, just look at yourself and uh, trying to find, try to find the five reasons that uh, why you are so fortunate. Try to find the five reasons that uh, why you are so lucky. Just try. If you can find very easily, that means that your happiness level is uh, quite high. If you find a little bit difficult, that means that your happiness level is not that good. And the, if you find the why you are the what, what the reason that if you try to find the five reasons that why you are not so lucky, 
I think that you will find a lot of the reason that why you're not that lucky. So that shows that your emotion, negative emotional level is quite high. Why you are not that lucky? Find some reasons. Both sides, you have to look at. So the beginner level that the, for the beginners, the Dharma practitioner, as I mentioned before, it's very important to see the, your levels of the emotion. Check the, your levels of the emotion. And the Dharma practice is actually to help you to control all these the negative emotion to reduce those, all those negative emotion, okay? So always you have to keep check that the, whenever you have the incidents, like a, such an incident that, uh, I, uh, like an incident that the bad incidents comes or the, something comes up in your life, how do you deal with it? So when you can deal quite well, that means that your Dharma practices are improving. That is the, how you have to test all the time, okay? Because when you're when you're practicing the Dharma for beginner level, always you have to see that how you deal with the incident, bad incident, how you deal with your reaction. Sometimes that a lot of things can happen. We cannot control it. But one thing we can control is our reaction to that. Oh, how we can control the reaction. So, like if you look at the especially um, news, no? When you look at the news, lots of the, I mean the News will come and sometimes that we will react. No, sometimes we'll lot of react very badly. For the Dharma practitioner, it is not the right thing to do. Do you know that? Or I'm not so sure that. Uh, I, I think that sometimes I used to tell in the class that uh, in the Nepal, in my room, in my room in Nepal, that's a one side of the wall. I write the name of the, all the dead peoples. No, I don't know all the dead peoples' name. I wall. And uh, one time they had a flight accident in the Nepal and the lots of people died in the, that flight accident. So I wrote the flight number, date, and how many people died in the Nepal accident. I write there. And the, what I'm so happy with at that time is that the, when they're having the flight accident in Nepal, flight accident in Africa, my compassion and the, my sympathy is equally same to the all. That is what I feel. So that's why the, when you come to the Dharma practice, it's a very important that the, your compassion and the sympathy toward the people, actually, it should be the equally same, okay? Equally same. Even if you don't like someone, but the, you should love him. Are you getting my point? I always give the example in the class that the, I don't like a crocodile at all. I don't know the why I don't like the crocodile, but I still generate the love toward the crocodile. The love is the thinking, the happiness of the crocodile, thinking the happiness and the crocodile, wishing the happiness to the crocodile. That is a love, okay? So that's why the Dharma practice, the your, that in the Buddhism term, we call that, a, uh, what do you call that? Equanimity, how do you say? Huh? Equanimity, 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 equanimity. Okay, a little tough word, yeah. That is always, uh, that is also the one very important thing, okay? Sometimes when you come to the Dharma, sometimes when you, when you come to the Dharma and uh, that really happens the, all over the Dharma groups, okay? And not only, everywhere Dharma group. The one, one person told me the one thing, that person told me the very interesting thing is that the uh, person told the interesting thing is that uh, before the Dharma practicing, he told the, all the Dharma groups, no? whenever joining Dharma groups are very nice of practicing. When he get in the Dharma group, he heard the more gossip. <laughs> more, that is uh, when you, more people get to more gossip will come. More gossip come, that will more. If you look at the origin of the gossip, sometimes uh, your negative emotions are causing the gossip, jealousy, anger, ego, this will create a lot more gossip. So that's why that is a very important to watch out, okay? More people gather, love Dharma groups and more people gather, more gossip. Go. That person told me the one thing, the Dharma group, they feel that the more gossip he can hear. So that's why the one funny thing is that he told that if you don't hear any news, when he go to the, the Dharma group practice, he will hear the, all the news. <laughs> So this is the very important when you, especially the when you are practicing the Dharma. So that's why the, you have to very cautious about the, whatever you talk. If you are something you are talking because of the, your own jealousy, because of your egoistic attitude, and the, in the Bodhisattva Avatarichara, it means now you should remain like a tree. Don't talk. Keep the silence. Okay. 
that always watch out yourself okay sometimes if you talk the gossip and a lot of negative things it will create a more negative thoughts to the person whom you are talking also it will destroy the that person his or her mental peace no so that's why the, that be very watch out you have to watch out okay so that's why the, you have to always watch out that what you talk so when you feel like you are talking because of the, your negative emotion you just remain like a tree it say it in the bodhisattva avatara charya book you remain like a tree keep silence do nothing and remain this is the one of the most important and one of the best practice okay am i clear so that's why the one saying that the ancient time on the great master he was people will know that he is angry who so the master will not talk <laughs> so, <he's angry. laughs> so that is the saying when we were the kid yeah master that story is a very i mean the famous that story that so but it's a really the good practice when you are very angry don't talk and keep silence remain like a tree okay then you will not create any problem okay <laughs> so just thought to share with that because of the today is the mainly i just want to touch you the how you have to practice in the your, yourself and how you have to practice in the when in the group in the company no and the third thing is as i mentioned the company is a very important when you spiritual the practice only you can develop when you have the proper company when you are in the that spiritual dharma groups and the company and it's very important to discuss and to talk about the practice okay not to jump into some of the unnecessary topics okay so dharma practice and the group and the talk about how your practice is going listen from the others experience the dharma practices are something your experience and others experience can be very different for well, very honest with you my dharma practices are improve very much after when i talk with the students when they share the, their experience it really also helped me a lot even i spent so many years in dharma for me also it's really helps so that's what definitely it will have you when you discuss with others and talk about how they deal with the anger how they deal with the negative emotion what they practice so you can learn it from them also you can share that your idea and the very important thing is when you share don't get the egoistic attitude okay sometimes when you share slowly then you will bring the i mean not a bring okay you will generate the egoistic attitude okay you did this and you did that and you said okay if you feel that you have generated the ego then what you have to do stop don't talk okay that you have to do okay? sometimes when you share the more dharma practice things so it will generate the more your ego inside of the inside with you okay let me tell you the one story so have you heard that there's a, just a story when we are the kid and the monastery when we go to the debate yard when we debate we, in the monastery when we are the very young and uh, in the, the night debate it's a quite cold and uh, they're saying that the night debate time one ghost will come okay ghost that ghost name is the very funny name it's we call the donkey ghost animal donkey ghost okay donkey ghost and they're saying that the donkey ghost is very good at the debate and the, when the debate and if you lost the ghost will take you okay if you win then he will run away it is like a story but the when we are kid we truly believe that and the, we say that when the donkey ghost come his appearance will like a human but only thing is that what he cannot change that he is having the donkey ear and the donkey hand ear will don so that's why have you noticed that in the monastery winter time we wear the monk's robe let me show you an example like this way to cover up the your head no so when i was kid when the some monks come no even the my classmates or they comes with cover their head with the monks robe i will get to skate a little bit might be the donkey ghost. and then, then when they took out the robe then i will feel wow it's like it's my classmate or my friend no so that is stories goes like that so i was so scared that the way well we meet in the at the especially in the monastery nighttime debate at that time the light is not that good story comes from the tibet no they is having this is in the story the donkey ghost okay so when i was kid i was so scared when the night debate time when the some monks cover up the their head like that oh that might be the donkey ghost and uh, uh, i was scared with and later on when i studied the philosophy i, I was quite good at the debate and I, you know that and the many years i was studying i'm very good at the debate and the, a debate is like a competition game then sometime i used to wait for the donkey ghost that time i think that okay now we'll challenge with him i think that i can wait sometime even the night time i will wait and to see what is coming and sometime monks comes like that at that time when i was searching for him i really wish the monk would take off and see the donkey's ear no but i am not mad anyone <laughs> the donkey ghost then i till that oh i can defeat no in the debate 
that comes then later on then my thought change then i come to the more to the dharma practice i feel that the, if the donkey goes appear without debating i will surrender i will tell him i lost you can do whatever you want for me so this is the change so the dharma practice like that when you are sharing session sometime when you can share the dharma better than the other don't generate the ego okay if you don't feel that you are doing better than other always think that the more to wait to help them more okay more to wait to help them other also with the wisdom okay sometimes when i tell to help then the too much help is uh, sometimes you also know the right way of the helping that's a very important okay how to whether what is the right way that i will talk some other time okay <laughs> today time is up and i will stop here and uh, yeah so the choosing the company third point okay and uh, it's a very important to the company and the right way of the how you have to spend the time with the dharma company okay good yeah okay thank you, thank you. so then the today maybe we'll have a 10 minutes right now the breaks and i have to do the initiation preparations okay so yeah so like maybe uh any question on 115 we'll meet back there any question sessions or question answer if you have any question maybe i'll leave for the one or two minutes for the question answer okay good okay question mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. No, I, I just want to say thank you, Rinpoche, for coming to okay. Sacramento. It's thank so you. nice to see you. And I also want to thank the folks that have traveled in across the country to be here and out of state to be here as well today to see Rinpoche and to see the Sangha. So thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. That's it. We're short on time. So. Uh, Rinpoche, I feel like um, we we live in in a very toxic world, like and and uh, sometimes I feel like uh, very too sensitive, and it kind of an obstacle for me to to be in peace. So just a just a car honk to me in my way here, and I keep looking in the mirror of the thinking about this person is very negative and i feeling feeling bad feeling feeling like i'm i'm getting toxic uh, uh affecting is affecting me too much so how how you deal with with the toxicity of of mm. okay it's the okay so there's a few ways how you have to deal it. The first thing is uh, it's very important to understand from the other's perspective. Sometimes when we make the judgment from the, our own perspective. So you have to learn from the other's perspective what's going on in that person's life. Sometimes we don't know the, what's going on in that person's life. That's a very long time back, very long time back that uh, I was in the South India monastery. There is one young kid monk. I think he was age of 10 or 12. He don't study well. Very rude. And uh, he was class teacher told me, cannot train him at all. Whatever the teacher told him, he will reply back very harshly. And they told him that they want to take, they want to, they want to ask him to leave the schools, the monk school, no? So then I talked with him, what's happening with him. I didn't know that the, how his life was. He told me that the, his life the most worry about his mother. His mother, one time his father got the drunk and the kicked his mother from him, so damaged the both of the kidney mother. Now, can you imagine like that kid? How will they? Everything is now he feel very frustrated and mentally. Even the teacher tells something that the incident triggered him the, and the very much a triggered. And the, that is the something like that when you look the when you make the judgment, you will look from the, your perspective. So that's why the, to understand the other's perspective. Like an example, when you on the street, suddenly someone honked the car, okay? Maybe that might be the very hurry to get in the hospital. Some might maybe their parents or someone might get a sick and they might be admitted in the emergency. But we will not know the whole, the, I mean, the backgrounds. 
So that's why they're trying to understand the other's perspectives is number one. Number two is that the, it is the number two is the important thing is that the, whenever I always tell the people that whenever, okay, someone, someone's great, uh, someone is, uh, makes you that uh, unhappy, what you have to do is that you have to mentally offer that person to the Buddha and to pray the Buddha, bless him to make more intelligent and more kind, okay? So I twist that practice and the one of the lady told me she took the her parents to the holiday, like a vacation. And the, she told me the parents, have, they quarrel each other in front of the her, fight each other. Then she told me she just practiced and she offered the whole both her parents to move. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the second point. It's also, that's a, what you have to do. Because sometimes when you see that that person is a very negative, now what will you do? Just ask the Buddha to have them make that person more calm and the more intelligent. That practice will help that person or not, that no one knows. But definitely that will help yourself to bring your mind more calm. And the third thing is, uh, actually the third thing is uh, sometimes the happy situation. One time you get angry with the person, like an example, okay? When the person is uh, honk, car is honking, when you get angry one time, then the second time it will get much easier to generate the anger. It's like a happy situation. Now you are, this is the, now you are having the bad habit. You are adapting the bad habit. So you have to change your, this of the thinking, no psychological, the thinking, you have to change it. When the person hung it, you recite the mantra, oh, man, baby. I used to do like that. Because sometimes it's a, for wearing the monk's dress, no? Sometimes if you go into certain places, people will, America is very good. No one looks like so you at a very strange, no? In the, some country, when you're so like me, people wearing, they will, everyone will gaze and look at you. Things like, uh, I'm just run out from the circus. <laughs> so it is for me. Uh, what will I do is then for this, I will always pray the Buddha. When they see me, at least they can receive the blessings of the Buddha. And the sometime when I goes and the, in the jungle, I whenever I hear the animal sound, I recite the mantra, Oh Mani Pemeo, these all animals can receive the blessing. So normally people, when they hear the bird sound, they will enjoy it. This is a one way, good thing. I'm seeing very good. Okay. But what I do is I recite the mantra, pray the Buddha, they may receive these animals also receive the Buddha's blessing. So that is the how you can change, no? So when a car honk or make some makes that you're unhappy. But you cannot go and shout everyone on the street, no? So you can recite a mantra and the Buddha to bless them. Yeah, that is the what I do when the people gaze at me, look at me and wearing the monk's dress, no? So I will pray them may also they receive the Buddha's blessing, seeing as I'm wearing the Buddha's the robe, no? We, so may also receive the Buddha's the blessing. That is the, but so that is then you have to change like that way habit. So sometimes before what I use, whenever the negative thoughts come into my mind, I recite a mantra. Oh, mani pe me, oh, mani pe me, oh. So sometimes you might, you, oh, you didn't spend time with me. Sometimes when I'm alone, sometimes you may heard I'm reciting the oh, mani pe me, oh, mani pe me, oh. That time, that means that some negative thoughts come into my mind, okay? Not that I'm just thinking the mood, okay? <laughs> so that is the habit. When I recite the mantra, oh, mani pe me, oh, suddenly it's very easy to overcome the negative emotion, the thoughts. So negative thoughts come, suddenly I recite the mantra. When all the mind, mind is full of the positive thoughts, I never recite the mantra. <laughs> so sometimes two, three months, I don't forget to recite the mantra because that means that my thought become very pure. No, So this is the, how you have to choose. You have to change your habit. Because otherwise, when you, so when you someone, just example, okay, someone honk the car in the street and you get angry one time, two times, then the... Always you will get angry whenever you hear the car home. No? Always you will get angry. So that's why the, you have to change. Suddenly when you hear the car home, start to recite a mantra. Om Mani Pemeo, Om Mani Pemeo. And think that may the Buddha bless that person. Am I clear? Okay, that's the way how you do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe you can... Om Araya Pazaya Om Araya Pazaya